today on CityCast Madison. March starts this Friday, and there's plenty of charmed festivities going on in our hamlet this month. Ranging from a great St. Patty's Day parade to live comedy podcast tapings to planetarium light shows, you can bet on some real gems. Our newsletter editor, Haley Sperling, and I rounded up our top event picks for your guide to March in Madison. It's Wednesday, February 28th. I'm Bianca Martin, and here's what Madison's talking about. Haley, hello! Hello, Bianca. Ooh, girl, it is almost March. It's marching on. It's we're marching on, on into the year. It is so crazy, but I'm also very, very excited and very, very here for it. We are back to talk about what's happening in March and some events that we're excited about uh, that we want to bring to the fore. Who wants to start? Do you want to start? I'll start with just a quick one um, because it's happening in the very first weekend of March. On March 2nd and March 3rd, the Wisconsin Vintage Fest is coming to the Monona Terrace. So what to expect? A whole lot of vintage items. Have you been to that? Is this new? No. So um, we usually do like there is like a big like vintage like market that typically comes to town that usually happens at Garver, but that's usually like later in the year. But this one, like I said, coming to Monona Terrace, free indoor all ages event. There will be 60 plus vendors of vintage clothing and home goods and other items. And it's super exciting because who doesn't love vintage? I am, you know, once again, relating back to our New Year's resolution conversation, still trying to get thrifty. (laughs) And so I'm here pointing out all of these vintage fairs for y'all. And this one is exciting because it's um, hosted in part by Single Stitch, who are the folks that have a shop over on State Street. So it's a nice little local uh, Madison shindig. But of course, there's going to be a bunch of vendors from all around. So I love when like big vintage fairs happen because, you know, the, the awesome thing about vintage is that like everything is one of a kind. Everything is unique. And so when you find something golden, like you really want to hold on to it and like bring it home that day. And so in this situation, when you're just surrounded by all of these like golden opportunities and like vendors that you might not normally see, you know, Madison, we do have a pretty solid vintage scene, like our friends at Single Stitch or Still Goods or... Yeah, and Good Style on East Johnson. On East Johnson. So we we are um we are flush with vintage, but it's awesome when all these folks come together and you can kind of find stuff that you don't normally find around town. It's so fun. Okay, so like right now I'm wearing which you've complimented me on these before, but these like straight up 1970s, like orange gold pants that are disco as all get out that I got um, a vintage find. Um, And earlier this year, yeah, I went to the Midwest Vintage Flea, which sounds like it's similar. And I got this awesome like like leather Bulls jacket, like the Chicago Bulls. And I get so many compliments on it and it makes me happy to wear and it's and it's nice it's green this is a green movement <laughs> to I love reuse it. Is, I didn't realize buying new. that's where you got that jacket from amazing yeah that's yeah. a fine that, that's a fine it was a fine and frankly what happened I saw it across Garber like it was literally I can sometimes get overwhelmed in the bigger spaces so it's like I'm just gonna I was actually on my way out and then I saw it all the way across like up and I <laughs> I was like god I was leaving but I need that and I went and tried it on and the man's like you are the sixth person to try this jacket on and I'm like and none of these fools took it home please the six this and final yes yes <laughs> yeah. I love and that people love it like literally I get stopped all the time people are like you know this makes me so happy because you know the bulls they're everyone's team it's a great coat I love it so yeah and hopefully people can go find their own bulls jacket moment at the Wisconsin Vintage Fest happening the first weekend in March at the Monona Terrace. What what do you got going on this month, Bianca? Where are you headed? Well, now I want to, I think I'm going to go with following the calendar and start with the event that's 
coming up soonest. Um, if you you want to look good, sometimes you want to smell good. So the soap opera on State Street, which I feel like it just gives me all these positive feels, it is their 52nd birthday. And they're celebrating on Sunday, March 3rd, um, all day, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I don't know, it looks like they're going to have prizes to give away. Um, apparently, like a free night at Park Hotel, gift cards from Lucille's and University Bookstore, um, 50% off their birthday sugar scrubs. This sounds like an ad. I literally am just sh- sh- singing their praises. This is not an ad. But also apparently a prize wheel that you get to turn, which is always fun. I just brought this forward because I friggin' love the soap opera. And State Street used to be like mostly, I don't know, I I don't want to hate, but like it felt like, you know, local business owners. And this shop's over 50 years. Um, It's been there, you know, since I was a, a wee lad coming to Madison and checking out State Street. And I just... It's just cute as all get out, the soap opera. Like, it's a cute name. Have you been in there? Yes, I love it. Like you said, it's it's kind of one of those gems on State Street that has somehow withstood the test of time. Um, I think they did have a transfer of, like, a new owner come in a few years ago, and it was kind of like, oh, what's going to happen to the soap opera? But, like, I'm happy to say, like, right. it's still around, and they're still thriving. And it is. It's nice to have, like, that institution there when all of these other new stores are kind of just coming in and being like, what's up? You know, like we're another chain store from another state that you don't necessarily care about. But like it, it fills is... me with rage. Yes. <laughs> right. Because and I'm not a rageful person. But when I go to State Street close to the university, I'm like, what is happening? Right. Because it's like the urban outfitters of the world are the only ones that can afford rent on State Street. But I digress. Um, soap opera is great. I have friends that have bought materials to make their own soap there. I've bought lots of gifts for friends there um it's a solid solid local business and it smells beautiful all the time that's like just the ideal you know one of my favorite senses is the smell it's connected to eating okay speaking of eating do you have anything food related on your list i'm just (laughs) as a shot in the dark (laughs) Ooh. okay well i've got one Kind of. I mean, it is it is a beverage related. Does that count? Hey, yeah, it does. Okay, so this one is for all of the Swifties out there because I know there are plenty. Our dear friends at Sencha Tea Bar are hosting. Um, this is going to be like a multi day, like multifaceted event. So essentially, Sencha is going to be hosting a Taylor Swift pop up at its Madison location. So they have all of these special drinks and events and decorations planned. And um, one of my friends is like the manager at Sencha. So like shout out to Lila. We love her. And I've been able to see like a little behind the scenes of what's going on, you know, like what she's been working on. And like, I'm not a Swifty, you know, full disclosure, but some of the stuff that she's put together, I'm just like, this is insane. Like, I think it's just genuinely going to be a really cool thing for people to see there's going to be like big friendship bracelets and like a spinny wheel for drinks and they've concocted like this whole new drink menu that is Taylor Swift inspired and like I love Sencha I love their bubble tea I love their tea in general so like you know it's going to be great Um, and like I said I think this is going to be an event and something that really anyone can enjoy not just the Swifties it's like basically a month-long pop-up Like, of course, there's going to be a Swifty trivia night. There's going to be Taylor Swift bingo. They're also going to have a friendship bracelet making night, which I think is super fun. So just like lots of stuff. (laughs) Can I tell you a funny story? Yes, please. About these Taylor Swift friendship bracelets. Because so the person that I'm dating... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> spilling stuff. They are a very private person and their family maybe wouldn't know if they're dating someone, for instance. And his cousin came in from DC and she is a major Swifty. Okay. <laughs> a, a major Swifty and apparently made him a box with um those friendship bracelets, w- bracelets with his phone number on it to give out to, <laughs> to women. Oh my God. <laughs> because he's like very shy. <laughs> Well, I don't know if he's shy, but he does he doesn't talk that much. But I didn't recognize the like this is a phenomenon. The Taylor Swift uh, bracelet life is like a thing. That <laughs> that is like so pure and wholesome that they're just like looking yes. out for him. They're like, please find a woman. If you find someone, yes. give her this bracelet. <laughs> 
Yes, exactly. He found one. But... Did, he, did he give you a bracelet? <laughs> he didn't. I, I have no idea even how he felt about any of that. But it was, I was like, oh, that's really, really freaking sweet. But like, imagine you drop it and someone just like finds it and calls the number yeah. or something. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> It's She's like, could it. be like a, you know, a movie, like the beginning of a movie, an adventures. Um, Sencha tea rocks. Yeah. Sencha tea. I was just there the other day and I got this like strawberry hibiscus tea. Yeah. And I was quite pleased. They have literally everything and like the staff there is so bomb and like they really just care about the tea and about the product. So like if you're going in there and you're like, I have no idea what I want, but I want something sweet and caffeinated or I want something, you know, like savory with bubbles. They're like, yeah, we got you like hot or iced. And that's like the biggest question. Um, You know, I was (laughs) talking to my friend that works there and she said, you know, a lot of their regulars will just come in and get the mystery drink. So like they do this thing where it's kind of like short stack that does like the um, blind special, you know, where if you don't ask what it is, you get it for cheap. Um, this one's not like I don't think it's like discounted or anything but you can kind of just go in and be like I want the mystery drink iced and they'll just like make you a drink Um, and it's going to be amazing and it's going to be awesome they're just people who they know what they're doing they care about the product they care about the tea they care about the vibes and like it very much shows we love Sencha Um, and I think like I said yeah this Taylor Swift pop up is going to be super fun it's going to be happening all throughout March and a little bit into April as well so like there are going to be chances multiple chances chances for you to get your Taylor Swift on at Sencha. Yeah. And it's like right across from Momoka. It used to be um, Espresso Royale, one of those. So I would go there all the time when I when I was um, a gallery attendant at the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art. Uh, and yeah, I'm glad that something's in there. That's really, really nice. Speaking of good vibes, I've got a an event to tell you about. Sometimes we talk about like, where are you going to catch us around the city? This is a place you will catch me on March 10th at 7 p.m. at Gibbs Bar on Willie Street. Gibbs is that like bar that's in an old pretty house. <laughs> it's a house and there's a neon sign that says bar in front. And that's how you know yeah. you're in the right place. <laughs> yeah. It's a live podcast taping for a different podcast that admires our podcast. It's Several Questions with Nate Chapel. Um, who I would describe, yeah, as a local funny man and obviously podcaster. And he's invited me uh, several times to be a part of his show and this live taping. And it's really fun. So it's an hour of guests answering random, ridiculous, silly questions. And it's it's to great effect. Um, and it's, it's an interview style talk show and we have a great time. Um, and this, this time I will be one of the guests. Um, also Kevin Wilmont is one of the guests. He is a musician. So you see him around town. He's got a beautiful Afro and a beautiful smile and a beautiful spirit. And he's pretty funny. And then, um, Maggie Ginsburg will be the other person. She works, um, Madison Magazine works at Madison Magazine and she's really like interesting. She's also an author. Um, and this was the lineup from the, maybe like a month ago, month and a half. And we are just like, we get down. It's really funny. It's like, I don't want to say it's wholesome. Nate listening. I'm sure if he hears, me, <laughs> I will say it's wholesome adult fun, but it's like, we, we also get edgy, but, um, you know, you can get your cocktails and just sit down for a show. Uh, and this is a note that I got from him. The point of the show is not necessarily just like to answer questions, but it's a way that like using questions to get to know each other better. And I'm going to quote Nate, the creator, who said that he made the show because, and I don't know if I'm allowed to say this. I'm spilling everyone's secrets today. Uh, <laughs> because um, he says, I struggle with small talk, but like to get to know smart, funny people. And... I feel like that's so relatable and Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like that's a vibe in the crowd. Like the people that come, like it's, if you like improv, if you like, I don't know, comedy, or maybe you're a little weird, like you'll be perfect. (laughs) I love it. I love it. It sounds like, I mean, and Gibbs, it's got like very, I've never been to a performance there, but it seems like it would have very like intimate vibes. Yes, it is. It does. It's very intimate and everyone feels 
like you're everyone's participating and people like get to kind of shout out from our audience. Um, recently, one of the audience members was Rob Thomas from the Cap Times. His butt needs to get on on and be a, a guest at some point. And like, I don't know. It's really it's, it's, it's a sweet time. It's intimate. And it's just like pure shenanigans. So if you like that sort of thing, you can come check out the live podcast taping for several questions with Nate, uh, Chapel, me, Kevin, Maggie, a whole crew of of good folks. Um, that'll be fun. I love that. That sounds super fun. And that sounds like an amazing lineup. Um, I am very curious to know how it all shakes out. I kind of feel like this is one of those things where you kind of just want to like go into it and let the night just carry you away because I feel like this is a night where people are going to get carried away. (laughs) Yeah, honestly. (laughs) Do you have another event to share? Yeah, I've got, you know, um, at least one that people kind of expect to happen. Um, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, Madison's 24th annual St. Patrick's Day Parade will be happening around downtown. So, of course, you can expect live music, floats, and lots of family-friendly festivities happening here as we celebrate Irish culture and St. Patrick who drove the snakes out of Ireland, right? Um, as far as I'm aware. Um, but that'll be Dang around. snakes. Yeah, right? Uh, we got to drive drive the snakes out of Madison, please. <laughs> no, no tea, no shade. But that'll be around the Capitol Square. Uh, and just a fun time. Who doesn't love a parade? March 17th on St. Patrick's Day proper. It's always fun when you can like have the event on the actual holiday. So I'm sure that'll be a, a big event for folks. And also, if you're wondering why there's traffic around the square that weekend, now you have an answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. I saw for this year's parade, the 2024 Grand Marshal is Brady Mallory, yeah. who is a broadcast journalist that we love. Um, he is an anchor and reporter for Fox 47 and News 3. And he interviewed us on CityCast Madison and interviewed Madison Minutes, um, you know, just because he's like, what are you guys up to? You know, it's they, they were interested in us trying to connect Madisonians to Madison. And he is just so lovely and charming. So thank you. Brady, for being Irish and for being the Grand Marshal this year, uh, if you hear this, yes, <laughs> we no. appreciate you. We celebrate we, you and we celebrate all of the Irish, including we, the like 6% that is in me. We 100% celebrate Brady Mallory. He was one of like the... <laughs> The very few press folk to to take uh, me and Sam seriously when we started Madison Minutes, you know, when we launched the business, he was like, yeah, this is cool. I'll do an interview. Um, you know, what's up? We'll see if you guys stick around. And like, lo and behold, here we are. And like, you know, thank you, Brady, for believing in us. And I know he's going to kill it in the parade. That's going to be awesome. Yes. Um, so speaking of stars, I'm Courtney with that transition. <laughs> I love it. This is the event I'm actually most excited about. Um, It is going to be at the Madison Metropolitan School District Planetarium, which is at Bell Phillips Memorial High School. Um, I don't know if you also saw this event, but it is celebrating Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. And they have like this awesome. <laughs> I see you shaking your head. Did you see this one too? Yes. Were you going to bring this one up? Okay, it's happened. I I thought about bringing this one up, but I didn't because I was hoping you would. Um, but I okay. was I I only brought this one up <laughs> because um, I saw it when I was putting together our like weekly events email for our Madison Minute members. So shout out to all of our members who already know about this event because they get the events email. Um, but yeah, tell us more. What's happening? What's going on? For those of you who already know, see you there. Um, For those of you who don't know, I hope to also see you there. And I don't want (laughs) to, I don't want to oversell it, but (laughs) a night at the planetarium listening to the dark side of the moon sounds so fun. So it's another celebration. This one's 51 years. But yeah, that album was released originally in March 1973. And there's this like whole show that they have that combines like views of the solar system while you hear the 42 minutes of the album in surround sound. Um, It sounds like each song has like a different theme. Um, It says some futuristically looking forward and some a retro acknowledgement to Pink Floyd's visual history which sounds really cool. And, you know, you get to go like wax poetic and experience thinking about time and space. I have to admit, that's just one of my favorite things. 
Um, there's a trailer you can go see if you want to get like a little bit of the vibe. Um, but that is also coming up pretty quick here. Um, Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays. Um, it says February 29th through March 2nd. So um, also we should note we did a great conversation last year with the planetarium director, Ben Sensen. Um, so we'll leak to that. But I just, man, like I... I love planetariums and I love music and I love visual arts. So, and lights and shiny things. So it's pretty much my jam. (laughs) This is perfect. And honestly, I love a good album. Listen, you know, um, like I play a lot of vinyl at home. So I like just kind of like sitting with a full album and like appreciating the, the transitions or lack of, or just how, you know, songs are composed and organized within the own album structure. I just think it's kind of cool. Um, so this seems like a great opportunity to just like sit and relax with the music, but also have a bunch of other stimuli going on. And it sounds super awesome. Well, it's actually, it's reminding me now, if anyone is around at this time, when I was working at Momoka, my favorite exhibit ever um, was Leo Villarreal, and it was like, they were light sculptures. And if you've been in Momoka, it was all, it was, it was the entire like second floor gallery, which is huge. And when I would go in there to start it, I'd go around and it felt like a video game. And I just like started up all of the light sculptures one by one and like thinking about like neon, like these lights. So it's dreamy. If you like light sculptures, um, probably one for people who go to Burning Man. I don't know. I've never been, but it's, it seems like it's going to be cool. I love it. I love it. This kind of reminds me of the time that I went to like a laser light show for Tone Madison. Um, it was like a drive-in laser show. It was super cool. Um, but also oh my God. there were a lot more children there than I expected because like, of course, why not bring your kids to this family friendly event? It just like kind of threw me off. So I'm sure there will also probably be a lot of kids at this one too, because MMSD planetarium and it's like family friendly, right? It sounds like a nice yeah. thing for the whole family to enjoy. Kids are our future. Do you have any more events or is that wrapping it up? I think that just about wraps us up. There's a lot going on in March and I think we've covered a lot of it. We just had a full moon. um, So now we're on the dark side of the moon. There it is. (laughs) There it is. Of this conversation. Um, Haley, you are wonderful. Thank you for uh, joining me to create this March guide. Yay. Thanks for having me. That was Haley Sperling, our Madison Minutes newsletter editor. That's all for today here on CityCast Madison. I'm Bianca Martin. And a couple quick notes. First off, do you nerd out on Madison's local businesses and possibly love this podcast? Well, we may have a job for you. We're hiring a senior sales executive right now. If that sounds like something up your alley, definitely go check out our show notes for more details. And second, y'all, it's that time of year again. The Best of Madison nominations are happening right now. Will you be my neighbor and nominate us for your favorite local podcast and or your favorite local news website? We love y'all. We love our CityCast Madison fam so much. If you love us back, spread the wealth and vote for us. We had so much fun winning last year. And if you think we've kept up the work, take that minute or two. We'd appreciate it so much. We will have a link for you in our show notes. So go check that out. If you enjoyed the show, why not share this episode with someone who's got the luck of the Irish. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more stories from around the city. Until then, take good, good care.